ultrasound physics and neurology. What we'll do in the next 20 minutes or so, we'll talk about basic ultrasound physics and we'll have overview about some important problems and important modes of ultrasound and also we'll cover some artifacts of ultrasound. Sound is a series of uh, pressure wave that transmitted through a medium. So the sound need a medium to transmit through. The humans able to hear frequencies ranging from 20 up to 20,000 cycles per second. By definition, ultrasound is any frequency above that range. So anything above 20,000 cycles per second, we call it ultrasound. In fact, in the diagnostic ultrasound, here we are util utilizing millions of the cycles per second. Here we are speaking about 2 to 15 megahertz or million cycles per second. So far, far away above the human ability to hear. What is amplitude and what is attenuation? Amplitude simply is the height of the sound wave, or how loud is the sound wave is, or how intense is the sound wave. If the sound wave passes through an object, the amplitude will be decreased, and this is what we call it the attenuation. In fact, depending on the type of the object, if the object is highly attenuating material, the amplitude will decrease to a significant uh, degree, while if the object is low attenuating material like fluid, the sound wave will maintain much of its amplitude. So how does it reflect in the ultrasound image? Here we have the gallbladder image. So we have the gallbladder which is filled with fluid, which is the bile, and we have the gallbladder stone. If the sound transmitted from the probe and hit the gallbladder stone, which is a highly attenuating material because of the calcium, the ultrasound will lose much of, the, of its amplitude and this will be reflected as black shadow posterior to the gallbladder stone. While the same sound wave hitting now the fluid, it will maintain much of its amplitude and this will be reflected as brightness posterior to the gallbladder or posterior acoustic enhancement. What is wavelength and what is frequency? Wavelength simply is the duration of one complete cycle of the sound and frequency means how many cycles we have at per one second and frequency will be expressed in terms of hertz so one hertz equal one cycle per one second in this example we have a three cycles and we have one second so the frequency equal three hertz and you can imagine the ultrasound we are speaking about millions of these cycles per one second Wavelength and frequency are related to each other in the term of velocity. Velocity equals frequency multiplied by wavelength. And velocity will be constant in a given medium. May be different from medium to another medium, but in a given medium will be constant. So if we decide in this image to increase the frequency, the wavelength will be decreased. So the higher the frequency, the less the wavelength is. Or in other practical term, the higher the frequency, the shorter penetration of the sound wave into the tissue. How ultrasound work? The name of the game here is the piezoelectrical crystal located at the tip of the ultrasound probe. These crystals are able to convert the electrical energy into sound wave and vice versa. So now the probe will receive electricity from the machine and the crystal will convert electricity into a sound wave and will send it to the object. And depending on the type of the object, some of the sound wave will bounce back to the probe. Now the probe will convert the sound wave into electrical signals and will send it to the screen. And uh, the object will be plotted on the screen. But the ultrasound is not able to view any type of tissue. This depends on impedance. Impedance is the resistance of tissue to molecular movement. And in order for the sound wave to transmit from medium to another medium, both media should have the same impedance. If they are different in the impedance, the ultrasound will stop at that point and you will not be able to see any further structures. So what types of tissues we, or materials we have it in our body? So if you focus in the middle of this uh, table, water, blood, fat, and muscle have the same impedance. So the ultrasound is able to travel between these media very smoothly. 
If ultrasound encounter material with a totally different impedance number, like air or bone, the ultrasound waves will stop at that point, and you will not be able to see any further structures. In other very simple words, air and bone will block all of your sound waves, while other type of tissues will transmit the sound wave to some degree. Like in CT, we have hybridins or hypodins structures. In ultrasound, here we are speaking about term echogenicity. So if the structure is very wide, we call it hyperechoic, like bone or like air. If the structure is black or devoid of any echoic signal, we call it unechoic. And this will be represented in fluid, like blood or like urine. If the structure is darker than the surrounding, we call it hypoechoic, like liver or like spleen, or some of the lesions. If the structure has echogenicity similar to the surrounding, we call it isoechoic structure. Here again we have gallbladder image. So here we have the liver, we have the gallbladder which is filled with a fluid which is the bile, and we have the gallbladder stone, and we have air in the bowel here. So the liver will be hypoechoic structure. The fluid in the gallbladder will be anechoic. The gallbladder stone and the air in the bowel will, will be hyperechoic. Resolution refers to the quality of the image or the ability of the ultrasound machine to do, differentiate between two closely spaced points and display these two points as two points on the screen. If I have a poor resolution image, these two points will display as one point. On the other hand, if I have high resolution image, these two points will display as two points. And resolution depends on many factors. But one of the important factors is the frequency. If I have low frequency probe and I have a small object, there is a good chance that sound wave will miss that object. On the other hand, if I have a high frequency probe, and same small object, there is a less chance that the sound wave will miss that object and there will be a reflection of the sound wave to the probe. And the small object will be displayed on the screen. We have two types of probes. We have the high frequency probes and low frequency probes. The transvaginal and the linear probes, both are high frequency probes. So they will give you a good resolution. But the downside, they will not give you a deeper penetration into the tissues. On the other hand, the phase array and the convex probe, both are low frequency probes, so they are excellent for the deeper structure because of the good penetrations, but the downside, they will not give you a high resolution image for the superficial structures. So the convex probe, here the sector size is larger than the footprint of the probe, and this probe is excellent for the abdominal or pelvic exam, Again, because of the deeper penetration for the deeper structures. The transvaginal is high frequency probe, and the image here will be outstanding, but the downside will not give you a deeper penetration. And this probe will be used most of the time in the transvaginal exam, but can, can be used uh, intraoral, for example, to see the peritonsillar abscess. The linear probe, the sector size equal exactly to the footprint and is high resolution uh, probe and utilized most of the time for the vascular image or uh, ultrasound guided procedures. The phase array, the sector size is bigger than the photoprint and here we have a small photoprint which will be very suitable for the small acoustic window like if you want to uh, see the heart in the intercostal space. Some important buttons. The gain. The gain probably is the commonest bottom that you will use it in your practice. And this simply will change the brightness of the whole screen. For example, in this cardiac view, the image is very dark, so we are under gain. And this image, the image is very bright, so we are over gain. So you want to adjust the brightness of your image. So you can see the blood as an echoic blackish area, while still have a good delineation for the myocardium. TGC. Here you will adjust the brightness of your image, but now you have a better control for the near field or the far field of your image. 
So this button will adjust the brightness for the near field while this will adjust the brightness for the far field of your image. And uh, some machine will see a slider on the keyboard again to adjust the near field or the far field. So we have this image, the near field is very dark while the far field is very bright. So we want to increase the gain in this area and decrease it in this area by these two buttons. So now we end up with the opposite image. So the, the near field is very bright while the far field is very dark. So again, you want it somehow in between. So you can see the plot, for example, in the hepatic vein, any quick blackish area, while you can see the diaphragm, which is a hyperechoic structure as a bright area. And the other structure like liver or the cortex of the kidney, somehow in between. Depth bottom. Depth bottom simply will change the depth of your uh, image. So in this image, and the depth on the side of the screen display as 22, which is set for 22 centimeters. And the proper depth uh, depends on what you are looking for. For example, in this image, we are looking for a blood between the liver and the kidney in the Morrison barge. We don't care about other deeper structures. So you want to decrease the depth. Now the depth is 14 centimeters. Now we have bigger image for better interpretation. And this will not only magnify the image for you actually, but even will give you a better resolution. Because now the machine is not being distracted for analysis for unnecessary structures and focus the analysis only for the target organ. Some modes of ultrasound. The B mode. B mode stands for the brightness mode. And this is the mode that, that will use it 95% uh, uh, of the time. And this will give you a grayscale image. M mode stands for the motion mode. And you will uh, start with the B mode and you will have a line. And once you activate the M mode, you will end up with image with a vertical and horizontal axis. The vertical axis will display the depth and the structures. And the horizontal axis will display the time. And this you can from this mode, you can see the motion of... Uh, of any structure passing through that line. The M mode has a good temporal resolution, meaning that this will display the motion of highly moving objects, like the fetal heart or like the myocardium. Color Doppler. Color Doppler will display the direction of flow on the screen. So you will start with the B mode and you will have a color box in the middle of your screen. And on the side of the screen, you will have a color code. So the red here means the direction of flow toward the probe. The blue means the direction of flow is away from the probe. If the direction of flow is 90 degree vertical to the probe, you will not see any color. That's why to display the flow, you want to put your probe somehow angulated. And this has nothing to do with the arterial or venous blood. Simply means the direction is it toward the probe or away from the probe. Pulse wave doubler will display the velocity on the target point on the screen. Again, we'll start with the B mode image and we'll have a target point. And once you activate the pulse wave doubler, you will end up with the image here. So the vertical axis will display the velocity and the horizontal axis will display the time. And you can measure the velocity on the target point on your screen. The probe. Use the antiseptic spray before use and after use for any single patient. You don't want to spray the mercer from one patient to another patient. And as a rule, the probe has only two places, either on the machine or in your hand. So you don't want to hang it on the side of the machine like this. Because if the probe falls multiple times, that will distort the piezoelectrical crystal on the probe and that will affect the image quality. Probe manipulation. We have many types of probe manipulation. So sliding, simply moving the probe from one point to another point, either forward or backward or on the side, right to left or and left to the right. Compression, we are putting vertical pressure on particular structure. And this will differentiate the artery from the vein 
and also we'll check out the patency of the vein. Rocking, if you are rocking a very small acoustic window, but you want to spread the ultrasound planes to other structures, you will use the rocking movement. And tilting again the same like rocking, if you want to extend the ultrasound beams along the pathway of a particular structure, you will use the tilting movement. Rotation, this will allow you to shift from the long axis and the short axis view by rotating either to the clockwise or anti-clockwise. In the ultrasound, we have endless uh, planes of image. We have uh, three main planes of image, either coronal, sagittal, or the transverse image. The ultrasound probe has a marker. The ultrasound probe has marker. And this marker will correspond on the marker on the screen. And as a rule, the marker on the screen always will be on the left side of the screen, except in the echo, where you will keep it on the right. So if you are doing a transverse view, the marker on the probe will be on the right side of the patient. So the marker here is toward the right of the patient. So this is the right and this is the left. This is anterior and this is posterior. Can see the right lobe of the liver and you can see the inferior vena cava. So you will have an image almost exactly like the CT image. You are looking from the feet of the patient. The sagittal here will keep the marker toward the head of the patient. So the marker here toward the head of the patient. So this is the head and this is the feet. This is anterior and this is posterior. And you can see the long course of the inferior vena cava in this image. In the coronal sections, again, you will keep the marker toward the head of the patient. So this is toward the head of the patient, and this is toward the feet of the patient. And this is a touching air point with the skin. So this is the lateral side, and this is somehow toward the midline. Some ultrasound artifacts. Acoustic shadow. Acoustic shadow, as we mentioned before, now the sound wave will pass through a highly attenuating material like a gallbladder stone and that will decrease the amplitude of the ultrasound waves and this will be reflected as a posterior black shadow. Posterior enhancement, the same concept but the way around. Now the ultrasound is passing through a low attenuating structure which is fluid in the gallbladder and it will, it will maintain much of, of amplitude and this will be reflected as a posterior enhancement. And you can see it posterior to any fluid in the body, like in the eye here exam, which is filled with the vitreous humor. And you can see enhancement posterior to the eye. Also, you can see it posterior to the urine bladder. Edge artifact. Now, the ultrasound waves pass through multiple layers of the sidewall. And this will scatter and decrease the amplitude of the ultrasound wave and uh, we'll see a black shadow on the side uh, side wall and this is actually the gallbladder and uh, this is a mimicker of the posterior shadow seen in the gallbladder stone reverberations now the address of the sound wave passed through a highly reflected uh, structure like a pleura and the lung for example here some of the sound wave will came in touch with the pleura and will retain to the probe while some of the sound wave will bounce back and forth between the pleura and the lung for a while and will come back to the probe after delaying on the time. And the machine will analyze that delay in the time as there is actually another line on the deeper structures. And this line will be equally distance from each other. Mirror image, here we'll see a duplication of image along the highly reflected structure like diaphragm. So the sound wave will come here and will not come back immediately, but will roll around the diaphragm and will come back after delaying on the time. And the machine will analyze that delay in the time as there is actually another structure in the deeper field. So another liver here, or another kidney here, or another hepatic lesion in this area. That's all, and thank you very much.